how many of you have felt stressed or annoyed by a smartphone that just keeps on buzzing? You check your phone, even though you don't want to, and your home screen is cluttered with notifications. Some are irrelevant, or most are irrelevant, like marketing messages to make you buy something. And some are important, like a reminder that tomorrow is your best friend's birthday. There's no doubt that software and algorithms, especially mobile apps, influence how we feel and how we behave. So what if we could use software to affect us positively and change our behavior for the better? Could we use software to break addiction or improve our sleeping habits? Sure, software can do that. And when we are using software to improve our health, we are using software as medicine. Sounds easy, right? But also rather vague. That's what we want to achieve. So let's assume we write a smartphone application with the intention of helping people to quit smoking. As app developers, we do our homework. We work with experts on evidence-based psychology, such as cognitive behavioral therapy, or CBT, and we design a beautiful app. Then we test it on our smoking friends, and they say they love it. That's good. But it doesn't mean the app works. How do we figure that out? Well, the same way we should evaluate anything we call a medicine. We should do it scientifically with a clinical study, typically a randomized controlled trial. For our smoking application, we define something specific we want to measure, like the carbon monoxide levels in a person's breath. We recruit smokers. Half of them use the app, the other half doesn't. And after a few months, we make our measurements. If the people using the app have significantly lower levels of carbon monoxide, we say the app works. And just like we need to do when evaluating any drug, we finally compare the benefits of our digital medicine to any adverse effects and see if the software does more good than harm. We call this kind of evidence-based software digital therapeutics, or DTX. And things are happening in this space. In the US, there are a few FDA-approved digital therapeutics products. In Europe, Germany recently implemented a law so that digital health applications can be reimbursed and prescribed by doctors. But still, I mean, how many of you have been prescribed software by a doctor? And how many of you have been prescribed a pill? Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying we should use software as a pill. In a pill, you have molecules interacting biochemically you know, with your cells. But there are no molecules in software. It's something abstract. They may have the same effect, though. A sedative and a breathing app can both help you relax. But in general, DTX products are conceptually different and acting at another end of the spectrum. I mean, you cannot like swallow, inject, or inhale software. Nor will you always replace a therapist. Sometimes you need the human interaction. So if you can't replace a therapist, and you can't replace a pill, then why should we care about digital therapeutics? We won't cure cancer by tapping on a screen. But maybe the content on the screen can make pa cancer patients like, feel better and give them the support they so desperately need. Or maybe help them avoiding cancer in the first place by improving their lifestyle habits. One third of cancers, up to 80% of coronary heart disease cases, and 90% of type 2 diabetes can be avoided, avoided by improved lifestyle habits. And we know mobile apps are especially good at modulating our behavior. Even if we reduce these numbers by only a fraction, the impact is still huge. 
I'd say digital therapeutics is not here to replace today's medicine. It's a complement to fill in some of the blanks in today's healthcare. There are advantages. They're autonomous and scalable, not limited by the number of doctors and nurses. DTX products are always present, right there when you need them, when you feel the urge to smoke, when depression creeps in. They are cheap and fast to develop, especially compared to the one billion dollars it takes to launch and develop a new drug. In developing countries such as India, with its 600 million smartphone users, DTX products can have a tremendous impact by, for example, targeting avoidable chronic illness. Now, there are open, important questions about the ethics and data integrity when using software this way. How do we make sure a DTX doesn't recommend something harmful? How do we respect patient integrity and handle data securely? Many other applications in health technology are facing the same issues, and we are seeing improvement. Dealing with these issues opens up possibilities where we can use data for fine-tuning digital therapies, making them personalizable and more effective while still being ethical because that's the most fundamental difference to today's medicine, that DTX products become better and better when many people use them. By processing data and with artificial intelligence, we can make applications that are smart and adaptable. It's like a therapist with the experience of treating millions of patients. So these algorithms that are often used to make you buy stuff, like those marketing notifications on your home screen, will now personalize your medicine. When a symptom has several possible causes, it can be difficult to get to the underlying problem. And digital therapeutics can use data-driven methods to find the root cause of, of an issue. Let's say you're suffering from fatigue. Your doctor prescribes you a DTX, which quickly diagnoses you with insomnia. Down the line, the app gets to know you better and arrives at the root cause. Perhaps a sleeping pill is all you need. Great, problem solved. Perhaps you have a substance abuse issue, or there are patterns of depression in your data. And then the app adapts and targets those issues directly. I don't think this application exists today, but if enough people use digital therapeutics, we will get there. The world of digital therapeutics is still in its infancy, and I don't think the best products have even been invented yet. Remember, what software looked like 10 or 20 years ago, and imagine what will happen in the upcoming decades. In addition to software and AI development, what will the next generation of hardware enable? What can we do with wearables? DTX products that have a good first version today will have a much better version with stronger clinical effect in just a few years. I think digital therapeutics should play an integral part in tomorrow's healthcare. Doctors should be allowed to prescribe whatever works for a patient, including software. Digital therapeutics can do so much for those who are already sick by increasing their quality of life or even helping them recover from illness. There is also so much software can do in preventative care stopping people from becoming sick in the first place. So, in the not too distant future, before you go to the doctor, charge your phone, uninstall some of those apps which make you feel worse, and make space for your software medicine. <laughs>